Hi, I'm Amy Adams. Welcome to the California Stem Cell Agency's Ask the Expert series. We asked you to submit questions through our blog, Facebook, and Twitter about stem cell research and Alzheimer's disease. Many of you submitted questions, and today, Dr. Lawrence Goldstein of the University of California, San Diego, is gonna answer some of them for us. Let's go in. Why do you study this disease? Well, you know, originally I started studying it because it seemed interesting. We, we work on brain cells and the behavior of brain cells, and uh, as we started to develop new ideas about what was going on with Alzheimer's disease. My mother developed the disease. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I went through it personally. I don't want to make a big deal out of it, but it was bad. I mean, it was just a terrible thing to go through. It was hard on my brothers. It was hard on me. It was very hard on her. And to be honest, I just got angry about it, you know, personally. And so I've sort of resolved to do the best I can to hopefully develop something that will be meaningful in the lives of people who've developed this terrible disorder. We've had a lot of people ask, why don't we just inject stem cells directly into yeah. the brain to treat Alzheimer's or stroke or ALS or yeah. autism or a number of other diseases? Well, there's several answers to that question. One is, if we're going to inject stem cells into somebody's brain, first of all, we better be sure that those stem cells are not going to do something bad that they're going to be safe. You know, so we, to do that first, we'd have to have a, a safe prep of stem cells that we knew would not do something terrible. And then second, we'd have to have some evidence that they could repopulate the brain in some normal way. And that's harder than it sounds, because ordinarily, when the brain is built, it's when you're a fetus. And there are all sorts of signals that say how to build the brain that aren't there when you're an adult. So let's take an example of your iPhone. So when your iPhone is being built, there are all sorts of manufacturing instructions for you know, wiring up the pieces of the circuit boards and the screen and everything else. But then once you've bought an iPhone, those signals, those manufacturing instructions, don't come along with the phone. That, that's the adult phone. And so if part of it breaks, just injecting metal into the phone is not necessarily going to repopulate the circuitry of the phone in a proper way, even though metal is the raw material that built the phone. So we have to do something much more sophisticated than just putting the raw materials in. So tell me about the work that you're doing now. Yeah, so about four or five years ago, I decided that we'd really reached almost the end of what we could do with so-called animal models of disease, mouse models. And you know, just to, just to remind everybody, the mouse models of disease are engineered so that they develop some of the hallmark defects that you find in the brains of people with disease. But ultimately, they don't develop true Alzheimer's disease as near as we can tell. There's something different about mice and humans. Perhaps that's not so surprising. We are not just big mice. We don't look like Mickey Mouse. Our brains are different. We're big animals, all the rest of that stuff. And so I decided that if we were going to really make a significant impact, we needed to start working on human brain cells. And that's harder than it sounds. I can't just take a sample of your brain out and study it, and you haven't developed disease yet anyway. And once somebody's died of the disease, it's like studying a plane crash after the planes hit the ground. And, and the analogy I like to use is, you can learn a lot about a plane crash from studying the pattern of wreckage on the ground. But what you really want is you want the black box. You want a record of what was happening in the cockpit when the plane was getting ready to go down, or just before it did. You know, were the pilots fooling around with their laptops? Was one of them locked in the bathroom? Did they make a mistake? Or did the plane run out of gas? Or whatever. You, you got to know that. So the idea is that if we were to take a sample of your skin, in your skin cells, we would have your genome, your unique pattern of genetic variation that makes you susceptible to some diseases and resistant to others. We can reprogram your skin cells to a stem cell-like state so that they can make all your adult tissues, as far as we can tell, and they would have your unique DNA so that if we reprogram your skin cells to a stem cell state and then induce them to become brain cells, we would de facto have 
your Amy Adams unique brain cells in a dish that we could study. And if I had Alzheimer's disease? Then we could ask questions about those of those cells about what biochemical changes are there that are typical of Alzheimer's disease and start to dissect how your pattern of DNA variation leads to unusual behavior of your brain cells. And so we're in the process in collaboration with the Sanford Burnham Screening Center setting up a project to look directly for drug-like molecules that reverse the abnormal behavior of those brain cells that have Alzheimer's disease in a dish. Larry, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming to visit me. Good luck with your work. Thanks.